Hi guys, welcome to part two of our series on the UI search bar. Right, so in our last video, we set up our um, initial array. We also implemented the UI search bar delegate method, or at least began implementing it. Uh, we have done some work in terms of um, adding the method signature and an initial check. We're checking to see if the search text parameters length is equal to zero. If it is, we say that it's not being filtered. And um, if it's not equal to zero, we set our filter flag to yes. We then went ahead and allocked and initialized our filtered data. Okay, here's where things get interesting. To be able to um, use the UI search bar, we have to make use of something called fast enumeration. This is a language feature that's available with an Objective-C and it's actually pretty neat. So I would recommend um, every one of you that's watching this video to maybe take a look at the documentation. But in a nutshell, what fast enumeration allows us to do is really iterate or loop through, for example, uh, a list of values. Those values could be contained uh, in an array, for example. Now, typically when you use a for loop and you're using indexes, uh, you know, usually they have to be in sequence. Fast enumeration, like the name says, allows us to sort of do that in a much faster way. We can also enumerate across multiple values if you've got, for example, an object. Uh, so let me show you an example of uh, what this looks like in action. It's going to look a lot like a for loop. So we'll use fast enumeration uh, to basically loop through all of the values that we've got here. So, uh, so let's just say fast enumeration. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to say for, and we're going to jump through and say for n a string because all of the objects that we've got in our initial data array are n a string objects. So we're going to say for n a string, and we'll say we'll maybe call this city name, and we don't need any of this stuff here. So we'll say for n a string city name in initial cities. Let's move this to a new line we're going to define something called an NS range. This NS range, we'll just call this um, maybe city name range. And we are going to use a str NS string method. So we're going to say city name range of string. And the method we're looking for is range of string colon options. So we're going to say range of string and the value we're going to pass in there is it's going to look for an NS string object. We're going to pass in the value search text, which if you remember is our NS string object that was passed in as a parameter. Uh, and then we're going to set the option to NS case insensitive search semicolon to finish that up. With that done, what we can do then is come down here and say if city name range dot location is not equal to ns not found that's what we did, which is an enumerated data type and we're going to jump down and say if that's not found or if it's not equal to not found then what we simply want to do is we want to add this particular object to our filtered series cities array so we'll just say add object city name. So what we're doing here, of course, is we are going to loop through the list of cities that we've got um, in our initial cities array. Remember, they're all NS string objects. Um, if we, uh, we, we do that by creating an NS range, and um, we then leverage that to essentially check to see if we can find that uh, within our initial cities array. And if we don't, we just go ahead and um, uh, if we find it, we basically, or if we have a match there, we essentially then add that object to our um, filtered cities array. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing, but um, this is sort of a quick example of how fast enumeration works. Uh, with that done, what we can do is we can just essentially jump down and within our uh, method signature here, we can go ahead and reload our table view. And that is just through a simple 
my table view reload data method call. All right. Okay, with this done, we can actually jump into uh, the methods that I had um, incorporated using my um, snippet. And you remember those are the data source and delegate methods. So let's take a look at them. They're pretty standard, so you don't really need to know what was in my snippet. Just implement the standard data source and delegate methods. Uh, so the first one, of course, is number of sections in table view. We're only going to have one section, so that is return one. Number of rows in section is currently set to return 10. That's what was in my snippet. And of course, we're going to have to change this one some. So here's what we're going to change it to. So we're going to come down here and we're going to do a check. We're going to check to see if our flag, which is is filtered, is currently set to yes. If it is, the count value we're going to return here is going to be return we're going to return the value of filtered cities dot count if it's not filtered we just use the else and we're going to come down here and just simply return return initial cities dot count so pretty easy right there so hopefully that makes sense um, we can then move on to our self for row at index path method and what we'll want to do here is again something pretty similar to what we have here uh, so you'll notice here that I've got some standard or um, just boilerplate code that's setting the cell dot text label dot text property so what we'll do is we'll just blow this away and I'm going to go ahead and copy this because I need pretty much a similar format here and instead of returning uh, filtered cities dot count what I really need to do here is set that text label dot text property so what we'll do is we'll say cell dot text label dot text is equal to or is assigned the value of it, it is filtered so we're gonna say filtered cities and we're gonna say object at index index path dot row same something similar for this one so let's just copy the statement command C except since this case involves um, the scenario where it is not filtered we're going to call this call it on the initial cities so you can kinda of see the difference so here we're checking to say is it filtered if this flag is set to yes then we know that we need to show the objects that are in the filtered cities NS mutable array otherwise we're just going to show the objects that are in the initial cities um, NS mutable array. So let's do here. Let's go ahead. That should pretty much get us taken care of. So let's go ahead and run this application and see what we've got at this point. So give it a couple seconds here to compile uh, the application and then essentially we'll just be looking at a build and run. Should be just about done. Uh, give it a couple more seconds here and here we go there's our simulator and there we are so we've got our search bar we've got our table view with our list of cities I'm gonna try and tap into it and hit B and there we go it's filtering it now um, we could probably do one more thing uh, normally if I hit search I should be able to dismiss this particular uh, UI keyboard so uh, let's put in one additional method that would allow us to do that and um, this is again a delegate method so let's just jump back so we can go look for it um, that way we don't have to remember the signature and let's see what we've got here we have the search bar search but here it is okay so if you remember when we were running this application, let me pull up the simulator, you'll notice that when I tap into this, I get a UI keyboard. This UI keyboard has a search button. So one of the things we can do is we can actually leverage one of these methods to be able to know when we want to dismiss that keyboard. So in this case, we can make use of the search bar, search button clicked method. So let's click on that. I'm going to copy the method signature 
and we'll jump back to our implementation file and we will implement one last method to make our life a little bit easier and all we have to do here is we have to say my search bar and just do a resign first responder on it because what's happening here is when uh, anytime you've got a control that brings up the keyboard that particular object becomes the first responder or becomes something called the first responder and so the first responder is the only thing that can actually dismiss the keyboard so that's why we implement this particular method and then we call the resign first responder method on my search bar which will allow us to dismiss the keyboard so let's run this one more time and it's taking it a couple seconds to attach I do have a couple other programs running so that might cause a little bit of a delay and I am going to go ahead and pause this video uh, so you guys don't have to wait for this to show up on the screen and I will restart just as soon as we have uh, the app running in our simulator all right, we're back. It's a good thing I paused the video because it did end up taking quite a bit of time for the application to come up. Uh, but anyway, we've now got it up on screen and you'll see uh, this time when I tap into this particular UI search bar, I can begin filtering and if I hit the search button, the keyboard gets dismissed. Now, another implementation that I've done in the past is if you've got, for example, a navigation controller that's sitting on top of this, a particular UI search bar you could also implement some kind of a dismiss keyboard style button that does the exact same thing as what we've implemented here so I hope this was helpful that's how you implement a UI search bar um, this is also I think a pretty simplistic example of how you can use fast enumeration to really iterate over uh, a set of objects that are in a into a collection in a collection like an array and um, you know you add that object to another filtered array and then you can leverage that uh, in terms of your table view itself so I hope this was helpful good luck with your development uh, we'll catch you in another video